morning everybody, Johnny Be Good here. Uh, we have Jordan Higdon. Did I pronounce that right, Jordan? Y yes, sir. Okay, uh, we have Jordan Higdon on the phone today. Jordan, where are you from? I'm from Kentucky. Kentucky, where about? Um, western part, um, just actually south of Indiana and the Ohio River. Oh, okay. Yeah, I used to deliver quite a bit in Kentucky. Love that part of the country there. So how old oh, yeah. are you, Jordan? I'm actually 22. 22. Interested in trucking at all? Oh yeah, I was actually the one that asked you about um, different CDL programs and whatever you suggested well was actually um, putting an application up there and of course with them you have to be 23 in order to do the program. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, those pesky uh, age requirement thing, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you do for a living now? Um, well, right now I'm just pretty much been focusing on college, been studying uh, pharmacy technician, pretty much getting my feet in the door with that, since that's something that I've always wanted to do on the best side from trucking. Yeah, I, I get my uh, prescription out of uh, Walmart. I I drive them nuts because I've probably visited hundreds of Walmart throughout the country, and you know they have to transfer and transfer all that medicine from one Walmart to the other. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a nice uh, nice job. It definitely is. I know it's for the studying, though. It's, you're going to definitely study a pretty decent amount just to know all the different types of codes and things that can go wrong at any minute, but be able to know what to do. Yeah, I don't think I could, I don't think I could qualify doing that job. First of all, I, I don't have the, enough brain power to, you know, do that. And second, what if a customer, you know, ordered a, a bottle of oxycodone? I might just be able to, you know, take one out of every bottle or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, my wife works at a nursing home. And um, she had a nurse there that worked for the nursing home for 10, 15 years, and it turns out she was skimming all these uh, uh, painkillers or, you know, all these drugs, especially the, the pain patches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, so they keep wondering why, you know, the residents and patients are always complaining about the pain and yet the chart says it's been given so they finally caught up with her and she got fired I think I think some of them will actually go to prison you know? yeah so, that's those are pretty serious things that I actually have to worry about yeah, that's, uh, that's we've actually done a couple people that's really mean to deprive your patients, especially the elderly. I guess. You know, deprive them from the, uh, the pain medicine. And especially the one that with dementias, because then they don't remember if they took it or not, you know? Right, yeah. and then in their mind they take or they've taken it, but they have it. And it's so easy for the nurses. Yeah, I I taken it, and then of course, you know, the patient can't argue because they got dementia. They, you know, so, right? Yeah. So, how long have you been studying uh, pharmacy technician now? And almost been about a year, actually. Do you like it? I like it so far. I mean, like I said, the, or the studying part gets a little interesting, especially when you have to do the different types of math and all the 
um, different codes. But once you get past those parts, I mean, it's really fun because you get to work with different things. You get to work with everybody pretty much. And with the instructor that I have right now, um, he's pretty much always, or pretty much one of the instructors that actually seem to care and actually would do anything to try to help the students out. I, I, I won't be able to do that. I'm really bad at math. I sometimes jumble up the, the math. But it's really weird. I've had a couple of times that I've had, or that do that month, or um, because back in high school, I'm, math was the strongest subject for me, and the only thing that wasn't the best with math for me was the fractions, when it, whenever you have to worry about those, but except for fractions, I'm usually not too bad at it. I tell AJ, 2 plus 2 equals 22. I mean, how, how hard could that be? <laughs> yeah. So, what else do you uh, do you like? I mean, what do you do for a hobby? Um, well, a lot of people think I'm insane about it, but um, whenever I was in high school, a friend of mine actually got me into doing uh, storm chasing. What is it? Storm chasing, like oh, um, that really? old TV show. That yeah, yeah. How close? I don't. How close have you ever come to it? Um, I mean, we stay with our vehicles. We stay either far ahead or far behind because we're not completely set up like how the TV show was. How they actually have all those metal, metal vehicles to be able to survive. Yeah, there was this one uh, on YouTube. I say I see this. Uh, one vehicle that it's, it's shaped like a uh, like a flying saucer, and whenever whenever there was a tornado, he can drop down and completely be you know on the ground. There's no no air, and, and the tornado just swept right through it. And pretty interesting vehicles. And it was heavy. Oh yeah, I mean those, yeah, with those, with all the metal that they put on and the course with the metal, I mean, with one of the chasers that actually has one of those, he always had to worry about the axle breaking because of the weight, but once they were able to fix those, I mean, those things can withstand a pretty decent amount, especially whenever they took them through, um, I think it was Mythbusters, they actually use um, a jet, or actually put it behind a jet. I saw that. Jet yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. So, uh, how many tornadoes have you ever chased yet? Oh gosh, there's been, well actually, through uh, last year, there was at least, or at least 20, just because of that in Mississippi when they were getting hit so bad. Really? Wow, that, that many? Wow. So you actually go out of state just to do all that stuff? If it's definitely known to be a actual great chase or, or chasing day, well, um, me and a few friends that actually go out and chase will actually prepare some like clothes for me for the day, and we'll go out a day before if the models still look great, and then we'll actually do what we can to chase, and then we'll head back and backtrack, and then go out and try to help recover and try to help rescue people because of especially when you get all that damage. Yeah. Which is worse, tornado or hurricane? Probably a hurricane. Oh gosh, right? I mean they, yeah, it, it, they especially a category four, category five, I mean those can be pretty dangerous because you have to worry about all that flooding with the, yeah, um, yeah. the waves coming in, but then depending on the area, the hurricanes can actually cause tornadoes too. Not, not to mention that uh, hurricane lasts for a day or two days and the tornadoes only for a few minutes, so yeah. Yeah. How close did you ever come to uh, getting zapped by one or getting suck up? What was the closest one? You um, heard? about a mile, two miles. 
probably about two miles, so there was the one point where it actually started changing its track and we actually had to pretty much do like Reed Timmer did and actually reverse as quick as we could just because we were on a dirt road watching it and we were like, okay, well, it's going to stay out that way and all of a sudden it starts tracking to us so we had to pretty much book it out of there. So where would be the safest place to hide if you're out in the open field? I mean, ditches, uh, storm drains, uh, overpass, what would you do if you came very close to it? What would? Um, pretty much the only safest thing is a ditch, because I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, the overpasses are really good, but if you really think about it, if a twister or if the tornado actually comes through that, you're gonna, there's not really that much protection. I mean, yeah, granted, the ditch doesn't have it, but you're able to lie low enough that it could just pretty much jump right over compared to an overpass, it's just got to sweep right through it, it's just going to bring you right with it, as it sweeps through it. Yeah, um, yeah I, I used to think that, uh, like a lot of people, underneath the overpass was the safest thing, and I guess it, it wasn't, so... Yeah, do you have any videos? Uh, do you have a YouTube channel that you post that with, or...? Um, we haven't got the equipment yet to post it. Now I do um, have a YouTube channel that I do um, some gaming with some of the guys from the team. We'll sometimes do um, some of the things I used to whenever I first was trying to get into it. I did post like a couple um, radar videos, but um, we've still been trying to get all the perfect equipment to actually stream. Remember the movie uh, Tornado with... Uh Bill Paxton and what was her name? Something. Remember that? Uh, the oh movie? gosh. Yeah, the uh, Twister. Yeah, yeah, I, Twister. My mom and I watched it. All, we watched it all the time. Yeah. Did you know Bill Paxton died uh, about a week, two weeks ago? Yeah, he. Um, we had thought that he had. I think it said that he had some um, complications of surgery. He had. I forgot what they said it exactly was. Yeah. Now, the reason I ask is, is that somewhat a reality where they send those little sensors and all that stuff, or was that just a movie fiction? Um, in a way, some um, some of the chasing committee they do have things like that, but mainly one of the well-known chasers they actually have. Um, a team that actually goes out and puts these pretty much like a metal plate out on the ground and they secure it to the ground ahead of the storm and it collects the data that way and it's pretty much has some of the same sensors that those um, that they actually had in those um, little ball things right? yeah, yeah. so it's not necessary but they don't actually to, not necessarily to let let it go up there and, and gather the data. Right. Yeah. Has anybody ever survived uh, a tornado? I mean, being sucked up and spit out and survive, or no one has ever done that? Hmm. I don't. At least not to my knowledge. Just because of all for when it happens. I mean, you're pretty much when you're in it, you're pretty much dealing with a lot of debris, so all that debris as it's going around so fast, it's gonna pretty much impale you, and or once it finally lets you go, you're pretty much gonna hit the ground as hard as you can, because you're gonna be so far up. Yeah. Yeah, the, the one, the, the incredible ones was the one over there in uh, Dallas, Texas, where he, it hit the Snyder terminal, and all the the uh, Snyder trailers were just dancing up in the air. The empty trailers. Damn. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Whenever it doesn't actually hit where um, somebody is, I mean, it's definitely an interesting sight to see, especially how it interacts with trees and everything like that. And you see as the tornado moves out, that you see like 
the debris slowly falling like it's just pretty much snow. But when you think about it, though, it's the most dangerous thing ever. The one over there in Joplin, Missouri, I I, uh, I passed right by it about three hours after. That was a very devastating uh, sight. And yeah, that was the worst one that I've actually seen. But I mean, I luckily for me, I wasn't into that or in there because I was just literally that was the year that I had started getting into it but didn't actually have the time to go out like I do now. So just watching it on TV and seeing it happen and seeing the sky cams, it, it really put a reality on things. And it's like, well, what can I do to be able to actually help protect people from them and actually get a more advanced warning system to them? Are tornadoes really, really fast sometimes? Or is it a gradual thing? or? It really depends on it, really, because um, they've they've been known to go very slow, and they can track for or for a pretty decent amount of time. Or they could pretty much, with the wind and everything, it can fast track so fast that you really don't have really much time to think. But it just really depends on the behavior of the uh, of the tornado, because they could be fast one minute or they could be slow. Yeah. Do some people get sucked up but unaware that the tornado is just happening? I mean, it's I mean, it's, it's, it's very possible just because along with those um, fast tracks, they, you pretty much don't know until it's on top of you. I mean, you can get the warning system, it's like it's right here, but then all of a sudden it's right on top of you. How fast, uh, How what was the fastest tornado that ever traveled? Uh, is it like 30 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour? Oh gosh. Um, I mean, traveling from one distance to the other. You know what I mean? I, I'm not talking about the wind factor, but the way it moves. Um, I'm trying to think. I know there was um, pretty much, um, there was one that was that spread through parts of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana back in 1925. Um, and it was able to track over 219 miles, and the longest duration was about three or three and a half hours, and it was going pretty much 75, or 73 to 75 miles an hour. Wow. That's, that's faster than what I'm doing right now. Huh. Yeah, it, whenever you compare it to that it's like oh gosh because um back then that was the deadliest single tornado that was in the history and it ended up having over 695 fatalities Jeez. oh any brothers and sisters or Jordan? um i have one brother who's living here with us and then i have uh three stepsisters that um live here in town so do they still live with you in, in your parents' house, or...? Um, yeah, he, or we pretty much help our mom out, because... My brother are pretty much her caregivers whenever she needs help and everything, and... Um, since my dad's person is there, my mom and dad are divorced, it's, it's pretty much just her and us, us two in the house. So you're basically just like me, surrounded by women, right? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just so glad I got tampered with me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have we have our little our, our cat that we take care of, so it kind of gives a little difference, but yeah, it's def definitely different. I mean, I know that. <laughs> Been since I was in middle school that I wanted to do trucking and was actually getting to get into trucking and um, at a point my dad actually was like well why don't you come with me to um, I think it was Prime Inc and um, pretty much do the team driving but I had some things that came up and he's actually I think in the process of becoming a trainer for him. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a challenge living with all those women, and I love it. But man, with all that hair in the bathroom, whoo, it's it drives me nuts. Well, Jordan, it's been fun yeah. talking to you. Call back anytime, and and uh, I, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Anybody, As you will. Thanks so much, John. Anybody you want to talk to or uh, call or say hello? Um. I'm not really sure. <laughs> well, you want uh, to say hi to your mom and your sisters. Hey, mom. Hey, mom and Allie and Sarah and Heather. There you go. All right, Jordan. Take care, man. Happy Sunday. You too. Right. Happy Sunday to you as well. Yeah, bye. Bye. That was, uh, hey Jordan, uh, you're a very pleasant person to talk to. Alright, we'll catch you later. Peace.